told my wife, I said, I just met my best friend. I met my best friend today at the reading. And Haggy said that he had the same feeling. And we became best friends from day one till the day he died. You know, uh, Linda and I were in his hospital room the day he died. So uh, that's how long we were best friends. How could you tell just from a handshake? I don't know. And how can you tell, you know, when I fell in love with Linda? You know, you you can't tell. It's a, you know, if, if you want to get, you know, philosophical about it, it you know, I, I think we're doing everything on a repetitive basis and it's a recognition, not an introduction. And, and, and I, I firmly believe that's what Maggie and I did. We just recognized each other from whatever relationship might have been. It was just like, Oh, here you are again. God, good to see you. You know, that's the subtext and the same thing. Same thing was true with Linda. You know, when we started, we're a, a, a COVID romance, you know, we were zooming each other from Colorado to Oregon um, but in the course of, you know, two months of Zooming every night, it was a recognition of, oh, yeah, this is way too comfortable to be a first time. You know? Wow. So you just continue on. I love both of those stories. <laughs> when did you realize, because, you know, it was a five part mini series, obviously it got picked up to come back. And then, but I mean, do you have like a memory of when you were like, OK, wait, this is the one that's going to change my life? Well, I'm not sure I have an exact memory, but in the first year after we did the five and then they started airing, we we were quite low on the ratings chart. I, I forget where we were. We were like 30th or something to begin with. And it just kept mounting. And so by the time the fifth episode was was airing, we had a substantial rating. But you have to remember there were only three networks at the time. So, you know, the ratings don't equate to what they are now. But then when we when the network jumped on it when cbs said yeah we're going we're you know and i don't know if they picked up the front nine and then the back 12 or whatever it ended up being but the minute they they responded so quickly to picking us up for a series that's when all of us sort of looked at each other and thought "Uh oh this could be something but truly it wasn't until the who shot jr phenomenon that we realized that we're on a rocket ship this is going to go as long as the cast wants it to go and um, th th we had 13 years. Do you remember that first moment of like fame and like, you know, was it an airport? Was it walking down the street? And like, what was your relationship to fame? You know, like I've talked to people that think, you know, they say, look, it's a great thing. Some people have demons associated with fame and say, like, right. I just really want to focus on the work. Like, do you have that memory? And like, what was your relationship when you guys blow up? Well, well, first of all, I don't totally believe anybody who says they only want the work and they don't like the fame. You know, we work for recognition, whether it's from our fellow actors or the director you're working with. So recognition is a large part of why we do what we do. Otherwise, nobody would do it for the public. You could just act in your living room. Just study Shakespeare in your living room if all you want to do is the work. No, no, we we do it for the feedback. So, you know, it depends on how you respond to feedback, whether you enjoy yourself or not. Um, I was I wasn't like inured to it on Dallas, but I had had an interesting um, awareness of of recognition because of Man from Atlantis. It was such a unique series. You know, it was an underwater superhero in a time when. You know, there just weren't uh, those types of special effects show on the air. There was uh, the six million dollar man and the man from Atlantis. And that was essentially all there was. Um, so and then later on, the Hulk came in and things like that. But um, walking the streets, even during the filming of Man from Atlantis, people recognized me. They went, oh, you're that fish guy. Oh, yeah. You do that thing where you swim like that. Uh, so I got that. Um, the other thing that happened, though, that was interesting and sort of set the tone for my future completely in terms of recognition was uh, my son was two years old, year and a half old uh, when I did Man from Atlantis. And NBC did a big promotional push. They did, they came and filmed in my little apartment in Santa Monica, uh, you know, my wife and my son and myself and, uh, you know, went on and on and on. And then before the show launched, it was promoted on air and all that. And my wife was shopping in a supermarket and a person, a total stranger came up to her and pointed to my son who was in the shopping cart and said, that's that boy that was on the promotion stuff for that fish show. And we realized how invasive publicity can be 
And it was at that point I became very protective. Uh, I, I had a dividing line between my personal life and my professional life. And I, I wasn't mean about it or anything, but um, from that moment on, I never did an interview in my home. I never did an interview with my children. My wife was a different situation, of course, because we're a couple and we go out together and that, that's the thing, but there was never anything about my family. Uh, and I maintained that uh, to the to the very end. And now my you know my sons have children, et cetera. But um, I was ready in one sense for the 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 recognition fame factor of Dallas, uh, and and was sort of prepared. I was I was you know I was leaning into it. I, I knew something was coming when it started to get popular, so I was ready. But were you prepared for the over 100 million people, like you mentioned, you know, who shot JR? I imagine, was no. that just like every friend, every famous friend, everyone just did not want to talk to you about anything about like, no. give us spoilers, we we must know. It was off the charts. There's no way to even, there's no way to even describe it. Um, because I think now the the viewing, the people who are watching your show and stuff, they're so used to, you know, all of the reality shows and the entertainment tonight and extra and all these things. So they're bombarded with celebrity in their private life. But when the show was so popular and there weren't those avenues and you were out on the street, people were crazed about it they couldn't believe you were walking the street like a mortal you know it was it was insane and all of us in the cast reacted in different ways you know haggy loved it that he enjoyed nothing more than the recognition he he dressed for it he never went out unless he had his big cowboy hat and his dress to the nines um he he was he was the quintessential parade you know uh, and other people were, you know, less inclined to do it. You know, some cast members, I'm sure, had uh, press agents. Uh, I never had a press agent. Uh, I would, I loved working. I, I came to work early every day. Uh, you know, I was the first one in, last one out. Haggy and I would have a glass of champagne every morning at 6 a.m. Uh, but the, we worked so fast on that show because everybody wanted to be home with their families. So we had a director once who actually said, I love working with happily married actors. And we said, why? And he said, you guys just want to do your work as quick as possible and go home, you know? And people who don't want to go home always find another reason to delay. You know, I want another take. I need this, I need that, you know? And those are the shows that go forever. You go, oh my God, just let me get out of here. But never on Dallas. We were just one happy group of family members. Well, I do remember when that happened. It was like the cover of Time magazine. And it was literally everywhere. And people had guesses. And, you know, and I know you guys had like scripts and like different endings. And I mean, oh, the, the the queen mother, you know, Queen Elizabeth's mother, when she was alive, cornered Hagman in, in England and said, oh, Mr. Hagman, could you tell me, please? And he said, no, ma'am, 